Well, it certainly should be quite a battle here in the heat of the Las Vegas evening. The rematch of Dokes and Weaver. Weaver is in the ring. That's why we couldn't uh, bring you Leandra Riley, but she will be in the crowd talking with the many celebrities, the many ex-fighters here to honor... Uh, Here's a man right now, Muhammad Ali, who's coming in with Michael Dokes, the new WBA champion. So Ali in Dokes Corner Squarely. We'll be back with the WBA championship from Las Vegas, Nevada, right after this. And he's gone right over to uh, Weaver's corner to stare him down, Angelo Dundee. And the intimidation begins right now. Well, both guys are warmed up very well. I mean, the maneuver by Dokes' corner is pretty smart. The sun's going square into uh, the face of Mike Weaver, which is a good maneuver because you want to get every edge you can. So I think they're both warmed up. I think they're both going to do their thing. And uh, I'm looking for a very exciting first round. So, we now go to the ring announcer tonight, the veteran ring announcer, Mr. Jimmy Lennon. Ladies and gentlemen, boxing fans, here we go. The demand rematch for the WBA World's Heavyweight Championship. Fifteen rounds of boxing and bringing to your attention that the three knockdown rule is in effect. Three knockdown rule is in effect. The officials at ringside, judging at ringside from Orangeburg, New York, Harold Lederman. From New Jersey, and Jane brought for timekeepers at the bell. Physicians Hermansky, Dr. Donald Ro Romeo, and Dr. Ro Larry Robbins in attention at ringside. Here we go again for the WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World, 15 rounds. Presenting the challenger, the former WBA boxing champion, hailing from Diamond Bar, California, wearing red trunks with a wide trim. At 218 and a half pounds, 16 knockouts in 24 great wins, Again, the former champion, Michael Weaver. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, the defending champion in this rematch from Akron, Ohio. He weighs in at 223 pounds, white trunks with a red trim. He is undefeated, having won 26 bouts. The undefeated defending champion of the world, Michael Dynamite Dokes. <laughs> Referee Richard Steele now giving instructions. Let me see y'all. Where's my people? Okay, listen. I have gave both of your instructions in your dressing room, but I want to caution you now. Obey my commands at all times. When I say break, I want you to stop punching, take a step back. Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Both of them nose to nose in the center of the ring. And here is the story on these two. The 30-year-old Weaver trying to regain his title. Two inches shorter than Michael Dokes. And about five pounds lighter than Dokes, who looks a little bit soft to me. Not much difference in reach between the two. The referee is Richard Steele. Remember, it was the referee, Joey Curtis, who stopped the first meeting between the two back in December in just 63 seconds. Michael Dokes is not looking for a long fight. He just took a swig of water, and uh, he's sweating profusely already. You can see his uh, belly, his uh, muscle tone's not that good around the stomach. He hasn't been hitting that table. Well, he may have to end this early because there will be a question of stamina on the part of Michael Dokes as this bout continues here tonight. The referee, Richard Steele, brings them together, and Weaver is the man who comes charging after Dokes to start this one off. Dokes forced a powder punch early in the round, but doing so beautifully. A good left thrown by Mike Weaver. Now an assault by Dokes, pounding Weaver as they're going to try to settle this thing in the first few seconds of what appear. There's a left, two lefts catch Weaver. Weaver hurt by the second one, takes a right from Dokes. Dokes teeing off on him on the ropes just above us. 
Weaver started this. He flew out at Michael Dokes, but he's paid the price ever since. I, I felt that right away. They're both going to look to get it over with, and they both don't like each other, and they're looking bombs go away. And the one that lands with the flusher bomb is going to score the knockout. Weaver was shaken by a couple of snapping left hooks thrown by Michael Dokes in the first 30 seconds. But remember, the puncher is Weaver. Dokes is an arm banger. He doesn't let his whole full body go into the punch. They look tired already as the pace slackens off a little bit now. No ring movement on the part of these two, leaning at each other, ready to pound away. When you let punches like that go like that, Don, you got to ease up a little bit and say, wait a minute now, because in boxing, there is no extra gas tank. you got to look to go. If you're going to go to 15, you got to be ready to go there. They are midway in the round, which means this rematch has lasted longer than the first fight at this stage. There's no pleasantness going on in the ring. They're hitting each other on a break. They're throwing low blows. The, the Marquis of Queensbury rules is not being adhered to. Not before or during this fight. No love lost here. Weaver and Dokes. Very open resentment toward each other for very obvious reasons. The events of last December right here in Las Vegas. Very important first round because they're trying to establish the dominance right now. They're both landing low punches. Dokes getting a good combination through a solid left thrown by Michael Dokes. He's getting the best of it here. Faster hands, it up early. faster hands, Don, and definitely uh, Dokes. Uh, the puncher is Mike Weaver. Very interesting round. Started off furiously. They went to sleep for a while, came back. But the dominant pattern has been the left hand, certainly, of Michael Dokes that has scored time and time again and has hurt Weaver a couple of times. His body shots are not doing uh, Michael Dokes any good either, Don. He hit him a real good body shot, Mike Weaver. He landed right down to that soft part of his belt. That's right. That body is soft, and that will wear him down. That is Weaver's plan to take this as long as he can, and he will gain momentum as he goes along. Just seconds remaining now in the first round. So they got through the first round, something they could not do in the initial meeting between these two. Let's go to my mixing it up, Angelo, as Weaver flew at Dokes, but he paid the price for that in the early 30 seconds. And then later on, after a lull, Dokes went after Weaver again. And I would have to give Michael Dokes that first round, certainly. I'm no Dokes took the first round. Weaver and Dokes both on their feet, ready for round two. The second round in Las Vegas underway. Weaver with an obvious advantage in the first round. The heat, as uh, Weaver's accustomed to, having been in uh, Africa, South Africa, it's a very, very hot climate. And he's trained most of his time in California, Las Vegas. So he's accustomed to this heat. I don't know how the heat's going to treat Michael Dokes. It may not do him very much good. Michael Dokes, remember, has never gone past 10 rounds. Weaver coming on now in the second round. There goes that job that Mike Weaver never used before. It's going to be a very interesting thing because he's already bloodied Mike Dokes' nose. Watch it, watch it, watch it. The other interesting thing is a very slow ring because they painted that Budweiser sign in there and they use lead paint. So you'll lay notes in during a fight where their feet will be sticking, but it makes no difference to each of these fights because they don't bounce around. There is evidence of blood, as Angelo Dundee said, from the left nostril of Michael Dokes. Weaver appears to certainly have regained his composure here in the second round. Well, that jab's a very important weapon for Weaver to set up his hooks in his right hand. Uh, he didn't use it naturally in the first round, didn't have a chance to. Dokes, the outstanding amateur, turning professional, winning this title here a few months ago, trying to hang on to it here. Neither fighter has any respect for themselves. You can notice that. They're both out there to do one thing, take each one of them out of there. We're midway in the second round. It is scheduled for 15, the WBA heavyweight championship at stake. This unique card in Las Vegas. Both titles on the line today. Watch your hands, watch your hands. Michael's making an old, old type mistake, an amateur mistake, grabbing at his trunks and trying to pull him up. 
but maybe a couple of those shots are really hurting him downstairs. Yokes making Weaver pay as Weaver plugs in on him. Now a combination by Weaver. Toe to toe, away they go again. You get the feeling this can't last terribly long. Well, you don't know what these kind of fights are. The pace they're going could very well go all night long. The heat's going to be a factor. I think the Weaver will take the heat better than anybody else, Dom, because I think Dokes is not ready for a hot time fight in the Old Town tonight. 30 seconds left of the second round. Certainly more muscle tone evident on Weaver's body than we see on Michael Dokes tonight. He's got muscles coming out of his toenails, Dom. <laughs> Superbly conditioned for this. Takes that wicked left hook from Dokes again. Leans on him. Works to the body. Throws a good right. Weaver dies. Then body shots from Dokes. The overhand right thrown by Michael Dokes. All right. Let's go to the corner now of the reigning champion, Michael Dokes, and see what they're telling him. Here was action in the last minute of the round. Good combinations, the best thrown in the entire round. When, now, you notice, Don, when Dokes gets set to throw a shot, he doesn't put his full body movement in. That's what I mean by being an arm puncher. And if looks could hurt, when Mike Weaver looked at Dokes walking back to the corner, he would have scored a knockdown. Oh, they are scowling at each other into the third round. Dokes certainly showing more respect for Weaver than he did in round one. Weaver coming on more and more, and you get the feeling he's building confidence as he goes. What's Dokes trying to do is trying to lure him into counter punches, and Weaver's trying to offset him with the left jab, which is a good maneuver. We go to left hand, set up everything. This has the makings of an excellent matchup. As they will finally decide which really is the better of the two men. Obviously, 63 seconds didn't do it. We're going to find out here tonight. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you're looking in this evening from Las Vegas. Those trunks of dogs have got a little too tight on him. He keeps trying to stretch him. It'd be a mistake to be grabbing on him because the kids get nailed. Snap three rights, missed the last one, aimed at Weaver's head. Chopping right thrown by Mike Weaver. Head to head they go. I was talking to Jerry Kutzia. He said, boy, that Mike Weaver couldn't punch. They say, Mike Dokes keeps throwing a low blow that's going to hit him in the kneecap. But they've been hitting each other low, both guys. Weaver winced a few seconds ago. We're midway on the round. He caught one from Dokes. Good left thrown by Mike Weaver. He's scoring well now with either hand. Coming from off the ropes. Weaver's very dangerous in close because he throws the shorter punches. So Michael Dokes would do well not to get stake around those clinches. But he's going to get nailed. No question the greater hand speed belongs to Weaver. But Don, you notice when, when Dokes throws punches, he puts both feet together, nullifying any power in his punches. They're straight across instead of keeping his left foot in the pocket. You'll notice when he gets in the punches, both, hand, both feet are together. A lot of solid blows, no devastating blows so far between these two. And that's the average, how long these fighters have gone on their careers. So certainly as it goes on, Weaver has the experience and endurance. Well, we're going to find out this fight who's the better conditioned guy because it's going to be survival of the fittest. Less than 30 seconds remaining here in this third round. The fight just about even at this point. Watch your head. See the feet come up? Yep. Two feet. Five seconds to go in the third round. Man who so desperately wants to reclaim this championship. He thought he lost unfairly at a second. You understand? Three of them at a time. All right, come on. You got a good left hand. Use it. Up and down. Okay. Hey, give me that. Yeah. Okay. Throw some punches. Don't let him leave me up. Come up the middle with that shot. Well, there's a good solid right thrown by Mike Weaver in that third round, and 
Don Manuel told him in the corner he does have a good left. He's used it from time to time effectively. Well, they're exhorting him to throw a left hand to set up the punches. Uh, Mike, uh, Michael Dulce is going back to the corner blowing. Uh, they shouldn't be blowing third round. Now, I hope to God that, you know, he realized what the title means to a fighter. There is always the danger that it happened too easily for him in December, and that would affect his training coming into this rematch. No, there's no shortcuts in boxing. You've got to do it the right way or not do it at all. Don Chevrier along with Angelo Dundee, the veteran fight trainer at ringside here in the fourth round, scheduled for 15, the WBA heavyweight championship at stake. Michael Dokes, Mike Weaver. Don, they got no trouble knowing who's Angelo and who's Don. You got the great voice. I'm just here having some fun. Ah, but you got the experience, the expertise. I'll tell you, they're looking to hit each other with a sucker shot, and they were trying to work into it. Weaver is more perceptive with a left jab. I think Dokes are trying to take a breather. I think it's a mistake. You can't take time off in here. There appears to be less and less sting from Dokes punches as we go along, more and more from Mike Weaver. Halfway of the fourth round. Remember, the line was the longer it goes, the more it favors Mike Weaver. Angelo Dundee called Weaver to win it before this fight began. Well, it's not over. I mean, you know, uh, I've been wrong so many times, it frightens me. But I felt all, the, all things taken into consideration. And Michael Dokes, uh, thinking he can get the guy out of there anytime he wants to, was a mistake because two things don't happen at the same time. Lightning don't strike twice in boxing. A minute left, and this is the fourth round. Angelo Dundee, you have said so often, it's not what happens to a man after he wins. A good right, two rights by Weaver. Left hook by Dokes block. Now Dokes counter punching very well. We'll get back to that point of yours in a moment as the action picks up here. Chopping right hand thrown by Weaver, missing with the uppercut. Dokes missing with the right, then the left. Less than 30 seconds to go on the round, but it's not what happens to a man when he wins, it's how he reacts after he loses. That's right. He's gotta, coming through very well. You've got to be able to handle it. You've got to be able to realize what it means to you. All right, there's a caution now from the referee Richard Steele to Dokes about one of many low blows we have seen tonight. Less than 10 seconds remaining, and this is the fourth round. That'll take care of round four. Let's take it away. Thank you, Don. And I know, Lou, you're impressed. The low blows came into play. First, Weaver throwing one. And then in retaliation, Dokes coming back with a low blow of his own. So we come to round five, approaching the one-third mark of the scheduled 15 rounds. Fifth round underway. As Angelo Dundee stated earlier, Dokes backpedaling now, hoping to trap Weaver. Starts some counter punching. He's done that effectively. That was a good right thrown by Mike Weaver. And left hook really hurt. The, yep. the right wasn't that dangerous, but the left hook to the body really was dangerous. And what they've been doing, they're putting a lot of ice water down uh, Michael Dokes' trunks because he's really blowing right now and he's walking back to his corner like it's the last mile there's no reason for him because he's a young kid and i'm surprised the way he's reacting just 24 years of age the heat's certainly taking more of a toll on him he's in here at 223 heavier than he wanted to be we were at 218 and a half as we have stated looks superbly conditioned for this rematch i tell you if all don't go well tonight for uh Michael Dokes, I guarantee he won't have Dom carry on and whiskey for the pressman when they come into his press headquarters. Because he, they tell me he lives a, a real good style. But you can't do that as a fighter. you got to live the clandestine type of style. He's a gourmet cook, Dokes is. Maybe paying the price for such a hobby right now, although we have a long way to go yet. But again, that could be the problem for Dokes the longer this fight continues. 
He's in the role of a backpedaling counterpuncher much of the way now in the stiff round. And you can just sense the confidence that Weaver is building as each round continues past the midway mark of this defense. Michael's fighting dopes. Uh, Michael Dokes fighting the right kind of fight, backing off, giving him angles, the way he can't put too much power in his punches, making him reach. So Michael Dokes is fighting a good fight right now, the kind of fight he has to fight to beat Mike Weaver. The first time, some five months ago, it was all over in 63 seconds. Weaver caught flat-footed, was down once. Referee Joey Curtis finally stopped the fight. A minute to go in this fifth round. Weaver thought it was unfair. He said he wasn't hurt and could have continued. But of course, after ring deaths that preceded that bout here only a month before, the referee was being very, very cautious. That's the rematch, but you're watching right now. Trace of blood around the nostrils of Michael Dokes that has been there for the last three or four rounds. Less than 25 seconds to go here in the fifth. Weaver's got to pick up the pace. He just caught a thumb in his left eye. Two good jabs thrown by Dolts with the left hand. Both got through. <laughs> Round five at an end. Dokes showed a tremendous left jab more effectively, I thought, in this round than previous rounds. The fifth. So we are getting ready for round number six, scheduled for 15. Sixth round underway in Las Vegas. Weaver, when he went back to his corner, was complaining to his corner that he's getting thumbed. I don't see anybody go over to the referee and tell him he's getting thumbed. Because if, when that happens, you got to go over and tell the referee and caution him. You picked it up in that fifth round. Weaver took the thumb in the eye. Again, Dokes using that jab backs out of the way of the right body punch thrown by Weaver. It was Mike Weaver who, against Johnny Tate, needed a knockout of the 15th round to win and got one. Dropping Tate flat on his face to win that one. See, it's very interesting, Don. We're backing up, fighting counter fight, which and the other guy's fighting with aggression. Now, this is a new street point for the judges. Who's winning the round? Because aggression is Weaver. Counter punching is dope. Now, maybe one good shot in this type of a... Uh, round could be the answer of who won the round. It depends on your scoring philosophy, I would think. Yes. As to how you approach a fight, how you go about scoring it. I wouldn't want to be a judge down because a very intricate, tough job. But they got some great ones. These, these three judges they had tonight are real good ones. Harold Letterman from New York, Larry Hazard from New Jersey, and Jerry Roth from Nevada are the three ringside judges. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Midway in the sixth round. We have had no knockdowns to this point. Michael Weaver's waiting a little too long. He's not going to hit nobody trying to set up for one punch. He's got to go off his jab, let the shots go. And what Dokes is doing is keeping them off balance. That's the whole battle plan is working. Good left thrown by Weaver there. A minute to go in the sixth round now. And there is the knockout ratio. Dokes 55.5%. Of course, he has won a lot of his fights that way, and there is question. He has to go 10 or longer as to how much stamina Dokes will have. Remember, 10 rounds has been his limit so far. Michael Dose still looks to grab his trunks. He's going to get nailed with a left hook one time because he grabs his trunks with his right hand. You're right. That is an amateur trick. Which could backfire on him. 15 seconds to go on the round. Weaver just keeps on coming and Dokes ever so slowly backpedaling in a circular fashion around this Las Vegas ring. 
chopping right by Weaver at the bell to end round number six. On the strip, but when it comes to the boxing circle, Red, you are a very serious man. Your thoughts so far on this Dokes Weaver fight? Well, I, I think so far uh, it's about even, you know, really. As I know both of the guys, I'm afraid to make any kind of decision. I just like both of them, you know. All right, they're back I'm, in the ring. I'm, I'm betting to on the black guy. Betting on the black one. Okay, you heard it first from Red Fox. Dom? Well, that's about as much as the clues we have as to who's going to win this fight right now. This title is up for grabs. Round number seven. I'm not afraid to pay, take a pick. The guy with the red gloves. <laughs> continues to back around and look out that left which has been a very effective punch for him to jab as he goes he got two in right there on Weaver and Michael Dose is grabbing the ropes every chance he got he's looking for wrestling on Clinch it's dangerous to try to wrestle in Clinch because you're liable to catch a punch what he's doing is you keep moving maybe the stamina's not there to keep moving because it takes a lot of effort to keep moving He's not exactly spreading around this ring, but the movement has got to wear him down. Sure. It's easier going forward than going back. Different Weaver. types of muscle down, different time of movement. It is so hot here that uh, it's taking a toll on everybody, certainly these two men on the ring, but more so on Michael Dokes, it would appear. 90 degrees at fight time here in Las Vegas tonight. The referee almost got himself knocked down that last clinch because Weaver let go with a shot. He almost wasn't in the way of it. Referee Richard Steele has his hands full with these two midway in the seventh round. Michael Dokes is very tired. Just fell in that time and grabbed Weaver. You know, when you grab like that, you're liable to catch a punch. But both hands are extended. You're not in the punching position. There is a mouse under the left eye of Michael Weaver. That's the only mark he has to show. Dokes has had trickles of blood from his nose throughout this fight. Less than a minute to go in the seventh round now. Dokes continues to jab as he backs up. Dokes' hands going further down all the time, and Weaver's trying to take advantage of it by nailing him a left hook in close. Weaver playing the waiting game. Dokes may be running out of time in terms of stamina. And right, partially blocked by Weaver. 30 seconds now to go in the round, number seven. Weaver content to stand on the ropes in the closing seconds of the seventh round. Now, good combination from Dokes as they come off the ropes. Effective punches by Michael Dokes. At the bell to end round seven. This is a very close fight. Round number eight is underway. Bear in mind again that Michael Dokes has not gone beyond ten rounds. It will be put to a test of stamina as this fight continues. They're using plenty of water in Michael Dokes' corner, Don, uh, and it's completely wet there now. If anybody goes into that corner, it will slip because uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't actually go into the canvas because you have inside padding underneath. I have got Weaver slightly ahead of this stage into the early seconds of round number eight. How about you, Angela? Dundee? I got it very close. It's all according to what the eyes of the beholder. And everybody looks at the fight differently. Aggression, the best punches, the stronger punches. You don't know. Stronger punches, Mike Weaver. Aggression, Mike Weaver. Counter punching very well, Michael Doe. Let me ask you this. You picked Weaver to win. Is he on the right path toward that victory as far as you're concerned? Well, Weaver just got a cut eye. You never know in the fight. I mean, you know, everybody's got, you know, entitled to their opinion. My opinion is that Weaver would win it. He wants it more. And Michael hasn't been, you know, hitting the ball like he should as a fighter. Now there's blood from beside the right eye of Mike Weaver. A mouse out of the left we saw earlier. Now a trace of blood beside the other eye. Blood from the nostrils of Michael Doak still evident. 
that nosebleed is, is bothering the heck out of Michael because he's breathing from his mouth. You can right. see how he's sucking for air as he's going back, which is dangerous because if you've got your mouth wide open, you'll have to catch a shot. Voila, crack jaw. We are past the midway mark of the eighth round. It is scheduled for 15, remember, WBA championship at stake. And anybody's fight to this point. Later on, we've got Greg Page, Ronaldo Snipes, and then the WBC champion, Larry Holmes, will defend against young Tim Witherspoon. Now, more evidence of blood emanating from beside the right eye of Mike Weaver. Referee trying to wrestle him apart in the final minute of this eighth round. Richard Steele has been a very diligent, alert referee, no question of that. Michael Dolphin again. getting hurt, Don, with those body shots. He got hit a right hand to the body, he reacted kind of funny. Picked up his right leg, and, and I didn't like the way he reacted. We were flicking out the left jab. And that cut, it would appear, is well away from the eye of Mike Weaver. There's puffiness and blood on the right side. The mouse under the left eye, but nothing that serious, it would seem. Michael Dose is getting hurt with those body shots. I didn't like the way he reacted, the way he picked up his leg, and the way he's hanging in there. That's unnatural for a young kid. The breathing is bothering him more and more because of the blood from the nose. You can see that now. As we're down to the final five seconds of this, the eighth round, scheduled for 15. left from Dokes just after the bell as they go back now to attend to Mike Weaver's face. Ron Manuel is handler. The stage. And here is Dokes throwing one of the punches that did some damage to the face of Mike Weaver as he now has a mouse under one eye and this cut which they have cleaned up for the time being beside the right eye. Round number nine. The cut is not in a dangerous spot. No. It's under the right eye to the outside of the right eye. They're not the dangerous type. <laughs> the only thing about blood, Don, Doak sees the blood on Michael Weaver. Therefore, he figures, hey, he's got a shot to worsen the cut, and, you know, and end the contest a little early. That's encouraged for him as the blood becomes evident again beside the right eye of Weaver. Again, we state it is not a serious cut at this point. But it does offer encouragement for Michael Dokes. Don, we can easily say that the pace has not picked up, right? It has not picked up. In fact, the only brisk pace happened in the first 30 seconds of round number one. It was Weaver, though, who flew at Dokes and was hurt a couple of times, I thought. Paid a price for it. Dokes is grabbing in the clinches and he's paying for it because Weaver's pulling them towards him and nailing punches. So his hands should be up in the clinches and not be catching because he's grabbing too much. Dokes has got to be concerned about the breathing problem caused by blood from his right nostril. It's been around all fight. And of course, the fact he has moved around in a reverse direction so much, that's got to be tiring too, not to mention the arm weariness he must be feeling out of this heat of a Las Vegas evening, midway in the ninth round. I think Dokes just sustained the cut. I uh, just saw blood spurt, I don't know. Maybe from the nose. More evident now than before from the right nostril of Michael Dokes. That's more of a little welt, a little slit under Weaver's eye. But a dangerous cut on his part. A minute to go on the round. Dokes hanging on again. The fatigue of Dokes is very evident. I mean, he's grabbing, he's holding. You know, he's doing everything. No, he's Oh, wait a minute. There on. is a cut now. We yeah. can see it. It's under Dokes' left eye. He takes a snapping right. Counter punch into the body of Mike Weaver. But Weaver stung him with that right and comes after him to inflict more. He just punch. got hurt with that right hand, Don. He almost went down with it. If he'd hit him with that right hand, he'd been uh, down. 30 seconds to go. Risk action here in round number nine. Looking low. Dokes rips the right. Now the left. The left took by Mike Weaver. 15 seconds to go on the round. See, Weavers keep fighting his regular pace. Steady and sure. Left hook he throws. That's 
the bell to win round nine. Again, Steele has to jump in and steer Goats back to his corner. On Angelo, there's yes, the right. Almost came apart. If the ropes weren't there, he would have went down. Bounced off them and somehow, as tired as he is, as Weaver missed on the second attempt to connect, he stayed on his feet, finished the round. So now we come to the point that uh, Gokes has been a few times in his career, but not beyond the 10th round. Round 10 underway. The second go presented a real good job on the cut. He's a very good cut man. And you can hardly see where the cut was. Again, neither cut serious. Weaver's right eye and Gokes left. Weaver wades in with a body shot. Flicks the right up to the face of Michael Dokes. Then the left hand. Weaver scoring more frequently as Dokes fatigue intensifies. And he's looking to grab. Dokes is looking to grab him when he comes in. You can't do that with a puncher like Michael Weaver. But he's got his hands free. You can nail your good puncher in close. But he is the shorter puncher. Dokes' hands getting lower and lower again. Weaver had to survive the early rounds and has done that successfully. Now, taking the fight to Dokes as we progress into this, the 10th round. Scheduled for 15, the WBA championship in the heavyweight division at stake here in Las Vegas. Now, you know, this is, this is where you separate the men from the boys from the 10th to the 15th round. This is going to be a tough, tough fight all the way. And uh, I think Michael Dokes is definitely getting hurt with the punches more because he is fatigued. Halfway in the 10th round. We thought it would either be a very short fight or a very long one, and we're certainly on the long side now. But as you saw Dokes, stunned by Weaver's right back in that ninth round, you've seen Weaver hurt earlier in this fight. Peter Mann, with the capability of ending at the 415. Dokes a very tired young man. He's just looking to grab and hold and rest. Uh, Doing it that way, running in with his head, he's going to get nailed with a right uppercut. Sure as God made out. Under a minute, remaining in the tenth round. Come on, break this down again. And the referee Richard Steele saying, don't hold him, Dokes. That's happening more and more frequently as a tired Michael Dokes hangs on. Dokes must be telling the referee, it's okay for you, but not for me. Good right by Dokes there at the end of that clinch. See how Dokes is dropping his hands lower and lower, but he flexes them up from his waist. The left especially effective. Weaver pushed him out. Comes right after him. 20 seconds to go on the round. Yeah, because Dokes is falling in and grabbing him, Don. And that, that's what he's trying to do. So we were getting a little rough in there himself. Just five seconds to go in the 10th round. So for Dokes, he's heading into overtime in the 11th round. Takes a good shot at the bell to end round number 10. And Lee is with an old friend of yours, Angelo Dundee, Muhammad Ali. He's doing much better. <clears throat> I think Michael Dokes got him by luck the first time. And they show him because uh, Weaver's done much better. I think he's ahead now. If you could give some advice to Michael Dokes at this time, what would you tell him? Well, I would tell him to keep his distance and just jab and move, stay out of range because when Weaver's in close, he's hitting him too much. So I would just keep my distance and box him from long range. Thank you very much, Muhammad Ali, for your thoughts. Don? Well, good advice. Except for one thing, as Dokes got enough energy left to do the things that Ali wanted him to, especially stick and move. Well, when you're that young, Don, you never know what you can do, your own capabilities, because you can suck it up and really let it all hang out, because youth covers a lot of ill, Ill things you do in boxing. Weaver has 12, 13, 15 round experience in the heavyweight division, but Dokes has not gone this far in his career before the 11th round. Neither man terribly active the last couple of years either. But the conditioning of Weaver beginning to pay off here as this fight progresses now into an 11th round. Oh, 
Remember, we've got Page and Snipes and Holmes and Witherspoon. More great heavyweight action to come tonight. And I think you're going to have a lot of surprises, Don, because this is one of the surprises. No, step back. Step back. Not surprising you. Well, no. Uh, I'm looking at it as, as, you know, the professional standpoint. I knew Mike Weaver was hitting the ball. I know Michael Dokes wasn't doing what he's supposed to be doing. So you cannot train and keep late hours. You cannot train and trying to do everything but train. You got to do one thing. Weaver rips the left hand to stop the dancing of Dokes. Dokes leans in on him now. Dokes is dancing without direction. I mean, you're dancing. Aimlessly. Aimless, no reason. I mean, you got to dance and then let a shot go and get out of there. That was a good move. Got up at his toes and ripped the left hand to Weaver. Again, the Weaver jab, the left hand being flicked out. Missing with a lunging right hand. See, Michael's got to stop Weaver from coming in like he's doing. Now, I don't know if the guys in the corner are going to give him the stool in the next round because he's not doing nothing to keep Mike Weaver off. Jab, jab. That's Weaver's policy as he is the aggressor pursuing Michael Dokes around this Las Vegas ring. Think about Mike Weaver. He's not even breathing. He's just breathing nice and easy, steady pace. A lot of the jabs that Dokes is throwing in a counter-punching sense are back at his heels. They haven't got all that much sting to them because he's been in reverse gear almost since the second round. Less than 30 seconds to go, and this is the 11th round. No fight's never won till the final tabulations. I'm a firm believer of that. He's got to win it decisively, Mike Weaver, because you just can't sit back and say, hey, I'm winning the fight. He's going to win the fight because it never happens that way. That's what a challenger always has to do is Weaver missed time that punch and lunged into the ropes. He wants to throw the champion. It better be decisive. He wants the judge's attention. That'll do it for the 11th round. Mac Weaver still looking fresh heading back to his corner. Dokes looked fresher in that round than he appeared to be in 8, 9, or 10. Left hand that fortunately for Dokes just caught him as he was backing out of the way. Yeah, that was the best punch in the round. That one good punch like that could very well win around. Dokes on his feet ahead of Weaver. Twelfth round underway. Don, the corner instruction of uh, Weaver was excellent. Don Manuel told him, don't load up. Let your shots go. You're not cutting them off. you got to back them up. You're making them go around, around the circle. you got to cut the guy off. Let your shots go. Don't load up. Don't look for one big punch. Good right by Dokes there at the end of that exchange as Weaver sends a long blow, marginally low, to the midsection of Michael Dokes. Body shots definitely hurt Michael Dokes. That left hip, he hit him with like a, a liver shot, and that really took the legs out from underneath of Michael Dokes. Particularly at this stage, the 12th round of a fight. We repeat that Dokes has never gone this long in his professional career. Just 24, the experienced Black Weaver at 30. Knows what he has to do here in the late going. I think Mike Weaver's going to wait. When, as soon as Michael Dokes cracks his head, he's going to nail him with a left uppercut. Because Michael's putting his head right out there for him to nail. And it's a cardinal sin. Never put your head first. Your hands first. A little less spring in the step of Michael Dokes again in this 12th round. And he's getting a little sluggish. Getting Good a little sluggish, now. Don. Come on, punch it down. Let's face it, Weaver's got to be tiring, too, but he's in far better condition. I think, Don, you're the boxing expert. It just happened. I seen where Weaver was slowing up. And he caught a couple of good shots there, the left and the right from Michael Dokes. I don't care who you are, what shape you're in, you got to be tired after a bruising battle like this into the 12th round. Come on, punch it down. 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 Come
especially under these conditions. The heat's got to take its toll on the fighters. They're sweating profusely. They come in sweating, and therefore uh, they can't. All the water going out of body. You and I both know there's plenty of liquid in your system, but it takes a lot of strength away from you also. The guy lost half a gallon out here on the sun this afternoon. Not humid, but very, very hot. Less than 30 seconds to go in this 12th round. Low blow, it appeared from Weaver. Give him up, give him up. Steele saying, guys, step back. Listen to me, will you? He's earning his pay, the referee. Less than five seconds to go on the 12th round. Combination at the bell by Michael Dokes to end round 12. Now let's go to Chris Schenker and Lou Gossett. The number one Weaver got perhaps the best punch of that round off that Angelo Dundee talked about. Mike uh, Doak was getting very arm weary. He had his uh, special uh, trainer come into the ring. I don't know who the guy is, but he's a massage guy because he was rubbing his arms furiously. He's really getting arm weary. He can't get his arms up. A new experience for him. Into a 13th round now. I have, I have Weaver ahead at this stage uh, ever so slightly. And I think if he can hold and continue to do what he has done the last five or six rounds, he'll be all right. I think that Dokes has got to do something rather spectacular here to make sure of this win, Angela. How do you feel about it? I feel it's a very close fight myself. I think these next three rounds were very well can tell the winner of this fight. I think we were slightly ahead. His earlier cuts of no consequence now. You notice that the way the foot grabbed that time on that lead in the middle, that Budweiser sign? They, got, they painted that sign with lead paint, and every time the guys try to slide forward, their feet will grab. And that just happened to Mike Weaver. Body shots are really taking their toll on Michael Dokes. He just got nailed a couple of good body shots, a left hook and a right hand to the body. And he's really sucking for wind again. And he's really blowing. A key point you made earlier, the body shots, the most telling of all, the most wearing of all, into the late rounds of a fight such as this. Passion for holding from the referee, Richard Steele, to Michael Dokes. A snapping left hand thrown out. Now a good body shot thrown by Michael Weaver as Dokes retaliates, counter punching off the ropes and leaning into him. Michael really got hurt with those, those shots that time. And really, you see, he can't even get his hands up the poor kid. And if he gets dropped this round, it wouldn't surprise me, Don. He's got a little over a minute to get through this 13th round. Dokes very arm weary now. Got to wait a long time in arriving. Not much snap to his punches, but he's got hard. He continues to throw at Weaver, who continues to keep coming after him. Rich is saying, watch your head, watch your head, because poor Michael Dokes is going in and trying to grab, that's all, with the head first. He's coming in low all the time with it. Less than 30 seconds remaining in the 13th round. Both men have been hurt, but not down. Notice Michael Weaver still keeps the same pace, slow. Much faster hand speed throughout this bout, in particular now. Although Dokes did get a good right off there. And there's the bell to end the 13th. Two to go to decide the WBA heavyweight championship here in Las Vegas. And I'm with you, Angelo. Dokes is surprising because he looks like he's really tiring and wearing himself out. He'll come off the ropes, as he did there, and sting you with a couple of shots. They were furiously massaging the upper body, arms, and chest of Michael Dokes in his corner. Weaver on his feet, 13th round underway. 14th. Johnny Taco is trying to keep him facing the sun, but there's no sun out there actually to bother anybody. I think well the, the best thing Taco said was hit him in the belly, and he did a good job on the guy's cut. Where the body shots are taking his toll on Michael Dove. You know what the old 
whole story is the body don't move, the head does. Ripping left hand in contact from Mike Weaver that time. Best shot was the body shot. He missed the left hook, the missed body. the right hand. The left hook to the body landed. And that back yokes up all the more. Actually, Yokes, considering the fact that he's a little soft on conditioning, you can see that he's doing very well. Hanging in here. Yokes has got nothing. Yokes is fighting on guts, courage that he's got plenty of. A lot of it. And, and he has nothing in there, actually. No sting, no bounce, no nothing. There certainly isn't much sting. Those punches coming from a retreating position off his heel. Not having much effect. But the scoring blows when he lands them. Weaver there lashing out the left again. Missing with the right hand. Weaver's making a mistake of looking for one punch. Should go underneath like he's doing there. Really dig down because that's the shot he's hurting him with. Midway on the 14th. The body punches have certainly. Guilty wades in again with the left. Follows to the right to the head. Mike Weaver's literally running at the guy to get the shots. And Dokes is smart enough to wrap him up and tie him up because otherwise he's going to catch those shots downstairs. There he grabs him again. A little over a minute to go on the 14th. Yeah, Michael Dokes is, is really hurting in there. Every shot he's getting hit right now is hurting him. Dokes reaching down for a reserve of second wind that has been a long time in coming, and he hasn't found it yet. In boxing is no extra gas tank. You can't cover up. you got to go in there completely conditioned. Again, leaning in on Mike Weaver. That's about all he can do is the crowd now booing him a little bit for that. The man is exhausted. Less than 30 seconds to go in the 14th round. The judges have to be impressed with the freshness of Weaver, the crispness, the fact that Dokes is hanging on a lot of these later rounds. Dokes is actually grabbing and putting his arm down to his side so he won't get hurt with those body shots. Trying to protect himself there, but a couple have gotten through. There's the bell. The 14th round is over. Michael Dokes, look how slowly he makes his way back to that corner. So glad to find that stool waiting for him. You have got to spot, and your hands have got to move. I need this round. You understand what I'm saying? When he throw one, you got to throw four. You got to have the best round this round. Captain, we need this round. You got to finish strong. You understand? We got to have this round. That is pretty sad advice that you need this round if you're going to win. But will this round be enough for Dokes to win now? I think Weaver has widened his lead. Breathing up. Breathing. Deep, deep one up. Up. Hold his up. Hold his up. Deep one up. The body shots have been punishing ones. And again, it was Weaver with the most effective blow, the left to the body. Uh, Michael Dokes, you saw him lean in again. Hang on. Stool getting up slowly as the 15th round is underway. Good left thrown early by Weaver. Yokes trying to find some energy to throw those four punches to one as corner urged him to do. Weaver's going, Weaver's going to try to keep him busy, busy, busy. Dokes is going to try to flurry and keep out of danger. Weaver appears to be leading here. But remember, when he was behind a Johnny Tate, had to have a knockout to win in the 15th round. He got one. He looks every bit as fresh here. These two look like they're back in round one right now. Well, Weaver's a puncher, pure puncher, and if you get a shot in there, you'll have to see Dokes go down. And I would think that Dokes needs the big knockout punch if he's going to hold on to his title here in the 15th. Yeah, Dokes, Dokes has definitely got to hold on, but he's going to fall down because completely exhausted that he's staying up. Chopping right. Now the left of the body, a telling blow by Mike Weaver. Raining punches all over Dokes. There's the right to the side of the head by Weaver. Dokes not feeling well in this exchange. Wildly missing now. If I were, if I were Weaver, Don, I wouldn't be gambling like that. Nope. Cover up. Let your body shots go. Forget about gambling. I think he's... He may have it wide. He can afford to perhaps go into a conservative shell now rather than risk what he's doing at the present time. I tell you, the heads have been coming into play. Weaver has a big hematoma over his right eye. He's very lucky. This is the 15th round. 
Halfway through it. Michael Dokes with a big, big heart. Game as could be, going now five rounds longer than he ever has before, trying to hang on to his title. I'm surprised that Dokes doesn't have a big lump on his head because it's strictly a clash of heads. And that hematoma over the Mike Weaver's right eye is a very bad thing, and he's very lucky it is the 15th round. Time on his side now, not on Dokes. Big swelling over the right eye caused by Buddy. It's like it's like the blood rushing into one spot over the eye. Surprised we haven't seen it before now, the way their heads have been coming together. Wow, chanting Weaver. Also, the big lump created when you blow your nose because the air gets under the tissues and this causes the swelling. Referee slept almost caught in the middle of that exchange. 25 seconds to go on the fight. The WBA championship at stake. And it looks now as though indeed, after the early knockout and the fight being stopped, it will go the distance. A tremendous punishment taken by Dokes there from Weaver. A good right by Dokes in retaliation. These two are going to go at it right down to the final seconds of the 15th and final round. And it has gone the distance. It'll be in the hands now of the three judges, Harold Letterman, Larry Hazard, and Jerry Roth, to decide whether Michael Weaver has regained the championship or Michael Dokes gets to keep the crown he won. And Don, like I always say, I'm glad I'm not a judge. Well, as we talked about scoring philosophies, we'll look here now as Dokes came with a snapping right on that 15th round, but overall took the worst of it from Weaver, I thought, of the 15th by far. So do you go with the guy who was the aggressor steadily following his plan, Weaver, or to go with the guy who was counter-punching, back-pedaling Michael Dokes? Tell you, that was the best round of the fight, that last round. They really made it hang out. Great shots thrown at each other, both gambling. The first 30 seconds in round one, the last 30 seconds in round 15, the best action all the way along. But you've got to give... Weaver, a lot of credit. The man, no matter which way it goes, could hold his head high as he came back in search of his title. He's erased that 63-second effort once and for all. And Dokes, you got to admire his heart. The man simply had an empty gas tank from round nine on. Where he found enough to get through, I don't know. But was effective at times, even though he was exhausted of the final few rounds. It wouldn't surprise me to see that uh, Dokes may have a rib separation or a broken rib. He took enough body shots to perhaps have that happen. Interesting fight. The most interesting part for me was the fact that it was Weaver who lunged at Dokes at the beginning of the first round, not the other way around. Dokes is a tired, tired boxer right now. 24 years of age. He has earned his, his big paycheck tonight as champion. The question is, will he be fighting his champion the next time? Or will Michael Weaver, this man, be again the WBA's heavyweight boxing champion? We'll know very shortly as the judges' scorecards are being collected here at ringside in Las Vegas, Nevada, right in behind the Dunes Hotel. Much more comfortable conditions now will prevail for Greg Cage and Ronaldo Snipes, and then later on for Larry Holmes and Tim Witherspoon as they contest the WBC title. Don, you know what kills me? And uh, the center of it all is Jimmy Lennon, the ring announcer. Here's the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a majority decision in this WBA Heavyweight Championship fight. I will read the point totals for you. At 145 to 141, Jerry Roth votes in favor of Michael Dokes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he is overruled by Larry Hazard, who scores at 144 to 144. 143 to 143, a majority decision. It is even a draw. Draw? No. So that means that Michael Dokes Retain will retain the, the championship, and of all the fights I ever saw, this one I did not figure to win in a draw. No, I couldn't see that. I, there was no splitting hairs. Either one guy won the round or the other guy won the round. You have two judges who had it even, 
And you had one judge with a four-point spread for Dokes. Yeah. 145 to 141 was the first judge, and then 144, 144, 143, 143. Jerry Roth, the Nevada judge, was the one who gave the four-point advantage to Michael Dokes. So the draw enables Dokes amazingly to retain his championship over Mike Weaver. We'll be back with more from Las Vegas, Nevada, right after this. 